sort of started as uh, quite a few months ago, about six months ago, I'd say. Uh, Brooks Diamond uh, called me and uh, he said there's uh, you know talk of the, the Queen coming and, and uh, you know he might be one of the organizers for this event. So. Uh, and if that's the case, he's going to he's going to make a pitch for me to to meet the queen. So that's kind of how it all started. So I had an idea. Um, you know, it just occurred to me that I was a painter, and this is a member to his uh, uh, 400 year anniversary. And I said, well, maybe I could give a painting. At least I'd make the offer anyway and see where it kind of went. So uh, Brooks brought it up at the meeting, and they loved it. They all liked it right away. So. It never occurred to anybody, or you know, it didn't exist until that, until that just a few minutes before that meeting. So we we're set to do this, and then I had to start some uh, serious um, uh, research because I didn't know anything about Member Two, and uh, but you know, almost uh, there was probably no one, hardly anyone knows about Member Two and how this kind. Of, this uh, baptism and being a Christian kind of went down. Nobody really knew how that went. Uh, my research started with uh, uh, there was information uh, that letters that are that were written at the time from people that were at the the, uh, the event, and and uh, there were letters that were sent to different people, and they're all collected. And I look at it as a as a, an individual that has. Um, that, that had sort of pre-contact. His life was pre-contact, you know, before before any contact, and he lived there, and then a lot, for long, you know, for a lot of years, he also had contact as well. So he had, he was on both sides of that, that sort of edge, you know, and that sort of interested me, you know. But I think, you know, things were certainly changing, uh, and politically, I think it was a good move to, to become a Catholic, uh, to be baptized, because you know he's thinking for the welfare of his people, and and uh, this is another way to make an alliance. When I did this painting, it's red ochre. You see the red ochre, and red ochre is a, is a color that's really a sacred color, and it's really important because we use it in burial, uh, in burials as well, to to you know that the uh, few use red ochre and the creator will recognize you when you cross over, you know. And the Biotox use red ochre all the time in their daily life, you know, so it was very important this this color. And so that's why you have the, uh, the red ochre color as as the uh, you know, as him as a person. And I, I was not trying to do a portrait where you would recognize the face because, you know, it's way beyond that, but it's that also in the petroglyphs, free contact, the face was symbolized by a square or, or a circle. So we didn't actually draw the face, and it has probably something to do with their, uh, you know, their belief system. That you know, um, so you know, I, I kind of went that way, and, and I decided to use that square. And I, I've been using this all my career, actually, using squares. But I also want to show, you know, that that things were tightening up, you know, uh, land was being, uh, was starting to shrink, their, their, you know, their life was changing. And I, I want to symbolize this sort of like uh, this binding as sort of that idea of it. And as uh, things are changing and, and uh, it will never be the same again. I get a standard question all the time. How long does this take? Well, the actual doing it is very simple to me. You know, it's just a matter of uh, laying down paint and getting it done. The concept is the difficult part of the whole process. To me. You know, that's time consuming. 